All right, uh, in this video, we will be going over section 3.5. Uh, section 3.5 is about uh, related traits. All right, first of all, let me uh, give you an idea about uh, related traits. Uh, related traits comes into play when you have related quantities, okay? Whenever you have uh, related quantities, most likely we can come up with some relationship between the rate of change of those quantities, okay? For example, let's take this particular relationship, A is equal to pi r squared. You all know this formula. This is the area of a circle. Let's say the radius of this uh, circle is r and the area is A. Then the relationship between the area and the r is given by this equation. Okay, A is equal to pi r square. So we have a relationship between two quantities. What are the two quantities? A and R. Now the question is, can we come up with a relationship for their rate of changes? For example, a relationship between rate of change of A and rate of change of R. What is the rate of change of A in mathematical terms? Rate of change of A means rate of change of A tells you how fast your A is changing with respect to time. That means dA over dt, rate of change of A, okay? Rate of change of, change of A means dA over dt. What is the rate of change of R? Rate of change of R means dR over dt, how fast your R is changing with respect to t. Or in other words, that is the instantaneous rate of change of R with respect to t, okay? All right, whenever you say a uh, rate of change of something, that means you tell how fast that quantity is uh, changing with respect to time. dA over dt means the rate of change of area with respect to time. Okay, we, are, we know this relationship. Now the question is, can we get a relationship between dA over dt and dr over dt? Of course, thanks to the implicit differentiation, we can obtain a relationship between those two rates, okay? So, but you, what you do is, you uh, differentiate both sides with respect to t. If you differentiate your left-hand side with respect to t, you get dA over dt, okay? The derivative of a with respect to t is dA over dt. And then I need to take the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to t. How do I take the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to t? By the way, pi is a constant. That constant stays as it is. How do you take the derivative of r squared with respect to t? Well, that's where you are using the implicit differentiation. So you should have 2 times r times dr over dt by implicit differentiation. Okay? Think of what you do if you have y squared. What is the derivative of y squared with respect to x? That is 2y times dy over dx, right? In this case, you are taking the derivative of r squared with respect to t. In that case, you should have 2r times dr over dt. Right there, we have a relationship between two rates. This is the relationship between dA over dt and dr over dt, okay? Once you have a relationship between two quantities, we can find a relationship between uh, the rates at which those uh, quantities are changing. All right, let's proceed. Next, we have this uh, theorem. Uh, this theorem gives you formulas for volumes and surface areas, okay? So the first uh, part is the volume of a rectangular box. If you have a rectangular box of this form, uh, length is x, width is uh, y, and height is uh, z, then the volume is length times the width times the height, x, y, z. And the surface area would be 2xy plus 2yz plus 2yz, 2xz. Uh, That's because uh, the area of this surface is xz, but you have two of them. The first surface is this one. In the back, you have another surface. So you have two of them. That's why you have this coefficient 2 in each uh, term. All right, next, the volume of a sphere. The volume of a sphere of radius r 
if the ra uh, radius of your sphere is r then the volume of your sphere would be 4 third pi r cube okay 4 third pi r cube and then the surface area of your sphere would be 4 pi r squared and next the uh, volume and surface area formulas for cylinder if you have a cylinder of radius r and height h then the volume of the cylinder will be pi r squared h and the surface area of the cylinder would be 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared okay that's the surface area formula and of course uh, the uh, lateral surface area would be given by this formula lateral surface area means the area of the site not the top and bottom the site okay that area will be given by 2 pi r h and now if you go to the uh, cone like this the height of the cone is h and the radius of the cone is r then the volume is given by one third pi r squared h and the surface area of the cone will be given by this formula pi r times square root of r squared plus h squared plus pi r squared and the lateral area will be given by this particular formula lateral area means this area of the side area of the cone without the top okay without this base not the base here it's the top um, so that's what we mean by lateral area and here we have more formulas uh, here is the uh, Pythagorean theorem if you have a right angle triangle what that means is that one of the angles is uh, 90 degrees then if this side is a and this side is a and this side is c by the way this side is called the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle hypotenuse means the side which is right opposite to your right angle this is the right angle this is the opposite side this is called the hypotenuse then here is the relationship between two sides and the hypotenuse a squared plus b squared should be equal to c squared that is called the pythagorean theorem for a right angle triangle okay and then we have this theorem about similar triangles okay if you have two similar triangles as you can see these two triangles are similar triangles this triangle and this triangles because their corresponding angles are equal then the ratio between sides of those angles should be equal for example uh, h divided by b h divided by b means this divided by this side should be equal to the corresponding side on the other triangle that is this side divided by this side uppercase h divided by uppercase b similarly lowercase d divided by lowercase b that is lowercase d divided by lowercase b is equal to uppercase d divided by uppercase b okay likewise you have a third relationship so that's a theorem related to uh, similar triangles this is called the law of similar triangles okay Which, that means uh, ratios of uh, corresponding sides are equal all right now let's look at an example here is the first example that i want to go over in each part that follows write down an equation that relates two given quantities then use implicit differentiation to obtain a relationship between rates at which the following quantities change over time okay so first of all the first let's look at the first part the circumference c and the area a of a circle first of all we need to find the relationship between the circumference of a circle and area of a circle let's see if we can find a relationship part a suppose you have a circle radius is r let's say the circumference is c circumference means this uh, perimeter length of this perimeter okay so circumference is c uh, radius is r then we know that area is given by a is equal to pi r squared that is a, that is the formula that is a formula that you know from your pre calculus class now this is as you can see this is a relationship between a and r 
not between A and C, but we need a relationship between A and C. How do you get a relationship between A and C? Well, first of all, we have a formula for the circumference. Circumference is equal to 2 pi r. We all know that. Now what we can do is, from this formula, I can isolate my r. My r is c divided by 2 pi. Now what I can do is, I can go ahead with this r and plug that in here. Value of r is c over 2 pi. So I can replace this r by c over 2 pi. That will give you a relationship between A and C. Pi times C over 2 pi whole thing square. Okay. If you simplify this, you get pi times C squared divided by 4 pi squared. You can cancel one of the pi's, this pi and one of the pi in the bottom you get c squared over 4 pi, 4 pi, that's what you get, okay, a is equal to c squared over 4 pi, 4 pi, so we have a relationship between c and a, next we are asked to find the relationship between their rates, okay, rates means the rate of change of a is dA over dt, dA over dt, rate of change of c is dc over dt. Can you get a relationship between these two quantities, these two rates? Of course, yes. Thanks to uh, implicit differentiation again, we can find a relationship. Okay. First of all, we have a is equal to c squared over 4 pi. Let me copy that uh, to the next page. Okay, now we have this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to T because I am looking to find a relationship between two rates, dA over dt and dC over dt. dA over dt, the derivative of the left-hand side with respect to T is dA over dt. What is the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to uh, T? First of all, let me pull out 1 over 4 pi. That's a constant. You have 1 over 4 pi here. So I pull that out. And then I need to take the derivative of c squared with respect to t. That would be by implicit differentiation 2c times dc over dt. I'm just applying the implicit differentiation. Okay. Think of this one y squared. How do you take the derivative of y squared with respect to x? That is 2y times dy over dx. I'm playing the same game here. Okay, this is the relationship between uh, dA over dt and dA, dc over dt. Of course, we can simplify this a little bit more if you want, because you have a cancellation, 2, 2. So that will give you dA over dt is equal to c over 2 pi times dc over dt. That's the relationship. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next part, part B. This time we are asked to find the relationship. First of all, we need to find the relationship, of course, relationship between uh, surface area S and the radius R of a cylinder with a fixed height of four units. The height of the cylinder is fixed, it is given. Okay. So, what is the surface area? What is how can we find the relationship between surface area and the radius? Well, first of all, let's find the surface area formula for a cylinder. We know that formula by our theorem. Okay, The surface area of a cylinder is given by this formula. S is equal to 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. We copy that there. A little bit blurred, it's okay. All right, now notice that we are given that in the problem, we are given that the height of the cylinder is fixed. 
Okay, so height of the cylinder is six, which is four. I can go ahead and plug in four for H. SC is equal to two pi R times four plus two pi R squared. Simplifying this, you get four pi R plus two pi R squared. Now we have a relationship between S and R, as you can see in this expression, in this equation, uh, we have a relationship between S and R. That's what we want. Okay. Next, we need to find the relationship between the rate of change of those quantities. That means a relationship between dS over dt, that is rate of change of S with respect to time, and dR over dt rate of change of r with respect to time. Well, again, use the implicit differentiation. The derivative of the left-hand side with respect to t is ds over dt is equal to 4 pi times the derivative of r with respect to t is dr over dt plus 2 pi times the derivative of r squared with respect to t is that's why you need to use the implicit differentiation, right? Times 2r times dr over dt. This will simplify to 4 pi dr over dt. Of course, you can uh, simplify this actually uh, one attempt. Here you have, notice that here you have 4 pi r, 4 pi plus 4 pi r times dr over dt. You can pull out dr over dt because dr over dt is common. Okay, here you have 4 pi r, that's what you have here. Oh, by the way, here we have a small typo. This should be 8. Okay, this should be 8. Because if you multiply these two, you get uh, 8 pi r. Okay. All right, that means this has to be eight. This has to be eight. That means this has to be eight. All right, this is the relationship between ds over dt and dr over dt. Okay, let's go to the uh, last part. Uh, length, length A and B of the legs of a right angle triangle with hypotenuse of fixed length seven unit. Okay, first of all, let's draw a right angle triangle. Part C, here is my right angle triangle. This angle is 90 degrees. My sides are A and B, and the hypotenuse is fixed, seven. Okay, now how do I find a relationship between A and B? Well, I can use the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared should be equal to 7 squared, which is of course 49. Now, notice that we have a relationship between a and b. Okay, this equation gives you a relationship between a and b. The next thing is, how do you find the relationship between the rates of a and b? Or in other words, how do you find the relationship between dA over d t and db over dt. Again, the implicit differentiation is going to rescue us. Okay, So I'm going to differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to t. a squared plus b squared is equal to 49. I differentiate both sides with respect to t. Then you get by implicit differentiation 2a times da over dt plus 2b times d b over dt is equal to 0 because the derivative of 49 is 0. Okay. If you want, you can move one of the terms to the other side. You get d a over, pardon me, d lowercase a over dt is equal to minus b over a times db over dt. Okay, This is the relationship between uh, the two rates, da, da over dt and db over dt. Okay? 
All right, that completes that example. Let's move on to the next example. Here is the next example that I want to go over. Suppose a rock dropped, dropped into a pond, causes a circular wave front of uh, ripples whose radius increases at three inches per second. Okay, how fast is the area of the circle of ripples expanding at the instant that the circle has a radius of 12 inches? Okay, this is again very practical. You drop something here and then wave front is moving this way, right? So we are given that the radius is increasing at this rate. Okay, radius is increasing at three inches per second. What do you mean by uh, radius is increasing at this rate? That means dr over dt. dr over dt is equal to three inches per second. You write per second by putting a line segment like this, okay? That means three inches per second. That is nothing but dr over dt. That is the rate of change of r with respect to time. That is three inches per second. That is given, that is fixed. Okay. And we are asked to find how fast is the area of the circle of ripples expanding. That means we are asked to find, find the rate of change of area because we are asked to find how fast is the area of the circle of ripples expanding. That means we need to find dA over dt when r is equal to 12 to look at the uh, question again how fast is the area of the circle of ripples expanding at the instant that the circle has a radius of 12 inches that means we need to find da over dt when your r is 12 all right how do you find da over dt when r is equal to 12 okay first of all we need to find a relationship between a and r before we find da over dr at r is equal to 12, we need to find a relationship between a and r. What is the relationship between a and r? We know that a is equal to pi r squared. Now we can immediately find a relationship between a and r. I differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to t. Then you get da over dt is equal to pi times if I differentiate r squared with respect to t, by implicit differentiation, you get 2r times dr over dt. Okay, But we are given that dr over dt is fixed, which is 3. So I can plug in 3 here. Then you get dA over dt is equal to 2 pi r times 3, which is 6 pi r. Now, what am I asked to find? I am asked to find the rate of change of area when r is equal to 12. Okay, That means I have to plug in r is equal to 12 in this formula. So my rate of change of area dA over dt when r is equal to 12 is equal to 6 pi times 12, which is 24 pi. That's what I am asked to find. Oh, this is not 24 actually, 72. Pardon me. Seventy-two pi. Square inches per second. Okay. square inches per second. That's an area, it should be a square, square inches per second, okay? So the area is expanding at a rate of 72 pi square inches per second. All right, that uh, completes that example. Let's move on to our next example. 
All right, here is the example. Suppose a pink spherical party balloon is being inflated at a constant rate of 44 cubic inches per second. Okay, what does that mean? How do you put that in the uh, mathematical term? If you read it again, suppose a spherical party balloon is being inflated at a constant rate of 44 cubic inches per second cubic inches per second that's the rate of change of volume right that means clearly dv over dt is given to us dv over dt is 44 cubic inches per second okay dv over dt is given to be 44 cubic inches per second. All right. What are we asked to find? How fast is the radius of the balloon increasing at the instant that the balloon has a radius of four inches? Okay, we need to find how fast is the radius of the balloon is increasing that means we are asked to find this is part a find dr over dt that's what we mean by how fast our radius is increasing okay dr over dt we need to find the dr over dt when r is equal to 4 notice that we need to find the rate of uh, change of radius when the radius is equal to 4. Okay, how do you find dr over dt? By the way, we are given dv over dt. So that means we can find the relationship between dr over dt and dv over dt if we know a relationship between v and r, right? Do we know a relationship between v and r? Of course we do. We know that v is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cube for a sphere. The volume of a sphere is 4 third pi r cube. Okay. From this one, now I can get a relationship between dv over dt and dr over dt. What do you do? You do the implicit differentiation. You take the derivative of the left hand side with respect to t, which is dv over dt is equal to 4 third times pi times the derivative of r cube with respect to t would be tr 3r square times dr over dt. As you can see, we have some cancellations here. 3 and 3 will be cancelled. This will give me dv over dt is equal to 4 pi r squared dr over dt. Okay, but notice that we know that dv over dt is a constant, which is 44. I can plug that in here. So we get 44 is equal to 4 pi r squared dr over dt. What are we supposed to find again? Our goal was to find dr over dt when r is equal to 4. Okay, so we can find dr over dt from this equation dr over dt is equal to 44 divided by 4 pi r squared but remember i need dr over dt when r is equal to 4 so you need to plug in r is equal to 4 in this equation 4 pi times 4 squared okay if you simplify this you get uh, 4 into 1 4 into 11 you get 11 over 16 pi. Okay, if you simplify this, you will get 0 0.02188 uh, uh, inches per second. Okay, if it is a rate of change of uh, radius, it has to be inches per second. Okay, because it's basically a length. All right, that's part A. Now let's look at part B. What does uh, part B ask? 
how fast is the radius of the balloon is increasing at the instant that the balloon contains 100 cubic inches of air. Here notice that we have a relationship. Here we can find dr over dt using this equation. By the way, this equation, if you isolate dr over dt, this is the equation that we get. So we can find dr over dt if you know you are right. By the way, this is part B. If you know you are, I can use this formula to find dr over dt. If you know you are, you can plug in r here to find dr over dt. Can we find r for part B? For the second part, can we find r? If you look at the uh, part B again, we need to find how fast is the radius of the balloon is increasing. That means we need to find dr over dt at the instant that the balloon contains 100 cubic inches of air. That means we need to find dr over dt when the volume of the balloon is 100 cubic inches of air. Okay, So we have a formula for the volume. We know a formula for the volume you know that V is equal to 4 third pi r cube. I want my volume to be 100 because I want to find dr over dt when my volume is 100. Okay, I can plug in V is equal to 100 here and then I can find my r, find the value of the radius when your volume is 100. Okay, so I'm going to plug in 100 here, 4 third pi r cube. From this one, you find r cube is equal to 300 divided by 4 pi. r is equal to 300 divided by 4 pi to the power one third. That's the value of r. So if you uh, simplify this using a calculator, you will get 2.879 inches. Okay. So that means when the volume is 100, I know the value of the radius. Okay, so what are we asked to find again? We need to find dr over dt, that is the uh, rate of change of radius, when you have this many cubic inches of air in your balloon. That means when your volume is 100, you need to find dr over dt. But I know when volume is 100, I know my radius. So now I can use this relationship to find dr over dt. dr over dt when r is equal to this number or volume is equal to 100. Either way is fine. dr over dt when volume is equal to 100 is equal to 44 divided by 4 pi times r squared. r is 2.879 square of that. And you can simplify this to find your dr over dt. That will give you 0 0.422 inches per second, inches per second. Okay, so that completes uh, that example. Let's move on to the uh, next example. Here is the next example that I want to uh, go over. Let's uh, read the example. Matt is six feet tall and is walking away from a 10 foot straight street light at a rate of three feet per second. As he walks away from the straight light, his shadow gets longer. How fast is the length of Matt's shadow increasing when he is eight feet from the street light? Okay, always a picture will help you to understand what's going on. Okay, here I have drawn a picture. I'm going to take this as the origin. Here is, of course, the uh, street light, and Matt is walking away from the street light. I'll take an instant where Matt is 
s distance away from the street light this distance is s okay perhaps i will erase these double s's here i'll take this distance to be s and then here is the length of the shadow i'll take the length of the shadow to be l okay now what are we given we are given that matt is moving away from the straight line at this rate at this rate means how do you put this rate in mathematical terms in terms of s okay we are given that matt is moving away from the uh, straight light at a rate of 3 feet per second that means ds over dt this is the distance from the base of the straight light to matt that means rate of change of this distance is 3 or in other words ds over dt is given ds over dt is equal to 3 by the way you need to understand something very important here ds over dt is plus 3 here because he is moving away with the time this s is increasing increasing means ds over dt has to be positive okay if he is moving towards the light then this ds over dt has to be a negative number you have to put that with a negative sign but in this case of course it is positive we are given that he is moving away from the straight line okay so we have ds over dt is equal to 3 what are we asked to find how fast is the length of mat shadow increasing when he is 8 feet from the street light that means we are asked to find dl over dt dl over dt this is the length of the shadow right we are asked to find at what rate your shadow is increasing that means dl over dt we are asked to find dl over dt by the way when he is 8 feet away from the street light that means when sc is equal to 8 so s is the distance from the street light to mat okay so we need to find dl over dt when s is equal to 8 that's what we want to find how do you find dl over dt well to find dl over dt what i am going to do is i am going to find the relationship between s and l if i can find the relationship between s and l i can use implicit differentiation to find the relationship between those two rates that's the goal how do you find the relationship between s and l well if you look at this uh, picture you see two triangles those two triangles are similar triangles one triangle is this one the other triangle is this one these two triangles are similar triangles so the ratio between corresponding sides should be equal that means I can apply the law of similar triangles 10 divided by 10 means this side of the bigger triangle divided by this side s plus l s plus l should be equal to this side of the small triangle divided by this side that is 6 over l. Okay that gives us a relationship between s and l of course you can multiply this uh, l to the left hand side then you get 10 l is equal to 6 times s plus l and if you distribute uh, this 6 inside the parentheses you get 6 s plus 6 l now you can move this l to the left hand side then you get your real relationship would be 4l is equal to 6s that's your relationship now i can use now i can use implicit differentiation to differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to t 4 times dl over dt is equal to 6 times ds over dt 
But notice that ds over dt is given, which is a fixed number, 3. So I can plug in 3 here. This will be equal to 6 times 3. So that means we have we have 4 times dl over dt is equal to 18. Now, what am I supposed to find? I'm supposed to find dl over dt or the rate of change of the shadow when sc is equal to 8. So, first let me isolate dl over dt from this equation. Your dl over dt would be 18 divided by 4. Okay. Now, the final step. Remember, we wanted to find dl over dt when sc is equal to 8. Okay. So, to find dl over dt when sc is equal to 8, you need to plug in sc is equal to 8 here. In fact, this is independent of s. So, even if you plug in sc is equal to 8, your answer is going to be 18 over 4, which is roughly 4. Point, uh, which is 4.5 inches per second you have to put the unit okay i'm going to give some points for the unit so make sure that you put the units all right so the shadow is moving at this rate as you can see notice that you have a plus sign here this plus sign means your shadow is increasing at this rate okay that's what really happening if you move away from a straight line all right, with that, we conclude uh, section 3.5. Now let's stop there and I'll see you next time.